Hi everyone, this is Rob Watson, the module leader for Tech 1002. And what I'm going to do in this short video presentation is just run you through some of the key issues associated with the eighth lecture, um, which is about the idea of music sharing. If you remember last week, we established the idea that music has always been a kind of social thing, and that we've always been sharing music. It's a key uh, attribute of what it means for us to be a kind of a, a society and a civilization. <clears throat> so we're intently wrapped into, and it's part of our, our, our cultural DNA, if you like, to be able to share songs and music and melodies as part of our general experience. Well, in this week, what I want to look at is kind of idea about uh, how we do this electronically. And what the kind of some of the, the main issues are that are associated with uh, with music sharing in our socially mediated uh, time. So rather than just thinking about how we maybe pass things between us as individuals, uh, how does this form a uh, part of a network and a set of practices that take place place within virtual communities and online communities? So as ever, I have produced a set of PowerPoint presentation. Uh, PowerPoint presentation that has uh, some clips in there and some images uh, so I don't share this uh, as ever but what I do share and it is up on the wiki so you can read this in advance is a set of notes in the form of a PDF that you can download and uh, you can convert this PDF into a Word document if you need to adapt it to make any changes. Uh, so the key issues that we're going to cover in the lecture, we're going to think about the idea of kind of uh, uh, forms of music reproduction. We're going to go back a little bit and look at the kind of importance of the, the album, the long player uh, and the LP and what that means. And kind of there's a kind of nostalgia at the moment about the LP and kind of, you know, you, you see uh, there are shops that sell uh, uh, reissues. Uh, music shops and fashion shops that sell reissues of kind of classic albums and uh, current albums and it's kind of there's a resurgence uh, in interest in a kind of analog form of music um, but we'll also look at the idea of how um, the kind of generation of music consumers who are uh, uh, have been brought up and grown up with digital uh, forms of media uh, how they're responding to different platforms and different styles of music sharing. Uh, so we'll look at some of the kind of issues to do with how data is used uh, in the development of kind of marketing campaigns. And, and you guys know I'm not into the idea of marketing. You know, it's kind of quite limited in terms of its, terms of its worldview. But the, the, the music industry is uh, primarily now data driven. It kind of identifies people by uh, their global location, by their interests, by their uh, cultural identity, by their social identity. And these uh, it might, it's dispersed. It's spread around the world. And your access music and your interest in music is accessed through things like YouTube, things like uh, Vimeo, things like Spotify, Apple Music, uh, those kind of things. And then bands use social media to communicate about their music through things like Twitter and Facebook uh, and, you know, lots of other kind of social media interfaces that are kind of commonly available. So we'll look at kind of some of the things that are, are used to explain and to identify what is a marker of success in these, in, in these uh, uh, pro practices. That's the word I'm looking for. So how people kind of judge, what kind of gives something a sense of it being a buzz, what gives something a sense of kind of, what, you know, when does it go viral is often a question that's asked and that bands often kind of try and achieve with music videos and, and supplementary content and material. But then we'll also look at the idea of the way that fans interact with that because it's no longer a one-way process, a one-way street. It's a uh, uh, It's a very mixed kind of environment, so there's traffic traveling in either direction and we'll look at some analytic sites that kind of promote the idea of how music is uh, uh, shared and spread uh, through networks of fans rather than it following a kind of transmission and broadcast uh, model which would have been used in the past in the kind of the, the, the broadcast age. Uh, so in 
what becomes important is where the fans are in the centrality, the, the, the centre of the network. And we as individuals occupy a central position from our perspective within this network of potential choices about what kind of music to consume and access and to share as well. Um, so we'll ask questions about uh, the, the role of uh, uh, music within the networked environment and also about the kind of legacy effects, if you like, uh, of the album and the long player and what difference it makes to uh, how we consume music uh, presently. Uh, there is some uh, reading to do and I've got the wrong page up on the wiki. Bear with me a second as I uh, find the right page. I thought I had the right page and I haven't. Media Design Production 1002. Uh, lecture notes. How quick is that to find some information? If I was using Blackboard, this would take me about half an hour to find this. I can just whiz on to it. So it's music has always been social. It's up on the wiki on the Tech 1002 page. Uh, the reading is the Delvish and Henderson book. Um, sorry, that's the Henry Jenkins chapter, Electro Electronic Music Sharing. And it's the Henry Jenkins chapter six, How Do We Court Supporters for Independent Media? Uh, that's what the chapter's about. Uh, there's also a programme which is the, to watch, which is the second episode of the Sound of, Sound of Song programme, which is available by the Box of Broadcasts, which if you follow the link and log into the... Uh, the, the uh, box of broadcast site with your DMU ID and password. Uh, you should be able to watch that. It's well worth watching. Uh, so I will see you on Thursday at the lecture. Bring your notebooks, bring your pens. Uh, make sure that you make plenty of notes, plenty of doodles. We're going to start doing this kind of thing uh, formally in the workshops so that we can enhance our note taking skills and capability uh, as the lectures kind of gather pace. And the kind of they become slightly more dense and wordy, and as we focus towards the key reading, uh, that's supporting uh, our learning through the module.